understand that we all are having difficult times in these troubled days. Amen. Difficult times. We look at our world in which we live in. And it's like chaos everywhere. I can't talk a whole lot about Texas or Miami or the Himalayas. But what I can do is I can speak on the things that I see here in Memphis, Tennessee. And we're in trouble. Amen. Our politicians are lying. They have made so many different laws for the wicked. Yeah. I mean, we even had a president that said that a man could marry a man mm. and that a woman could marry a woman. Mm. So that tells me that we're in trouble. Amen. Right. When the Bible itself speaks against those things, and one thing that really puzzles me is that when they be voted into office, they take their hand and they, they make an oath, an oath yeah. on the Bible itself. They put their hand there and they say, in God they trust, but they completely go against the word of God. Yeah. Well, with this hustle and the troubles that we are having, it's almost difficult to hear the voice of God. It, 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 it's, it's, it's difficult to hear the voice of God. Mm. Because we, we, we're trying to go to work. We're running. The streets is running rapid. You try to get rest at nighttime. But for some reason, it's just hard to hear God's voice. Amen. But I'm here today to let you know mm. that God is still speaking. Amen. And he's speaking loud. Oh, if I may, for a brief minute, Call your attention to 1 Samuel, the third chapter. 1 Samuel, the third chapter. If you have it, if you would, for the honor of God's word, if you just stand, please. Amen. It starts in verse 1. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim and he could not see. And the air of the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And Samuel was laid down to sleep. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I call not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not. My son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thou servant hear it. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood 
and call as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak, for thy servant hear it. You may have to see that. There's no reason to put a title to the word of God when we just plain to read what God is saying. For the benefit of understanding, I'm going to do a little backdrop here. There was a man by the name of Elkanah. He had two wives, one named Penana and one named Hannah. Penana had many children by Elkanah, but Hannah had none. Penana would make fun of Hannah. Because, see, unlike our society today, to have children is a blessing. As a matter of fact, for the benefit of understanding, the very reason why Hannah was upset was because the children of Israel was looking for a deliverer. They was waiting on the Savior to come that was promised way back when. You remember in the book of Genesis when it says that uh, the seed of the woman would bruise his head and the seed of the serpent would bruise his heel. Well, God was making a prophetic statement through his word that he was sending a deliverer to save mankind. Well, Hannah was upset for the simple reason she had no children. Penana was making fun of her because she had many children. And so if we pay attention to what's going on in our society today, don't make sense to make fun of people because God has blessed you with a particular thing. Some of us have jobs and we drive fine cars and we live in big houses and we have large bank accounts and we actually believe that they came from our own doing. Amen. Well, and sometimes we look down upon people. Well, Penelope was doing this very thing to Hannah. So what Hannah did was, once a year they would go to a place called Shallow where everybody would go and minister to the Lord and bring their gifts and offerings to God. But instead of her going and just making gifts, she made a petition. She prayed to the Lord and she asked God, she said, Lord, if you would give me a child, a man child, I would lend him or give him to you for his entire life. I might say, there are some things that we need to pay attention to. We get our children and we have our children. We don't dedicate them back to the Lord. Amen. We take it and we, as an as a old football player, we be wanting our sons, if we have sons, to play football and follow in our footsteps. Or if we have daughters, we want our daughters to be great singers, whatever our own ambitions may be. We need to dedicate our children to the Lord. Amen. Well, Hannah made this petition. And Eli was the priest at that time, no different than our society. He was a man that had two sons. His sons were sons of Belial, according to scripture. They were men that had relation or sexual activities with the women as they came to the ark of God. They was actually taken from the people when they brought their sacrifices to God. They was taking their, their, their sacrifices for themselves. And so what the Lord did was he sent a man. He sent a man. The scripture don't say who he was. The scripture don't talk about his background. It just said a man of God came. And this man of God came and what did, what did he do? Glad you asked. This man of God came and he said, Eli, how in the world can you show honor to your sons and not show honor to the Lord? So he, through God's permissive will, he gave a prophetic statement about what would happen to the seed of Eli. He said that they was going to be wiped out, mm -hmm. putting it in a nutshell. They would be done with. So Hannah, she had a, man, a little boy child. And when she had this boy, she took him when he was weaned, and she took him to Eli, according to the scripture. When she took him to Eli, 
This son, this little boy, was dedicated to the Lord. A lot of times they call him a Nazarite. And if I might stop right there, there's something that just popped in my mind right here. A lot of people in our society, when our little girls don't have likings for boys, and our boys don't have likings for girls, we use derogatory words towards these children. We call them little boys sissies. We call them little girls dots. Well, just maybe those children have been dedicated to God. Maybe they've been dedicated. But if a child hears something over and over and over again, they'll begin to believe. I can remember when my father used, my grandfather used to tell me when I was young. I used to go to church. I mean, I was in church every Sunday, uh, Bible study, uh, Sunday school, all the time. And my grandfather made a statement. Still, I'm still showing him his honor, but it's the truth. He made a statement to my my aunt. He said, "Y'all had that boy at church all the time. Said when he get a little older, he gonna he gonna walk away. And because he said that, when the opportune time came, that's what I did. That's what I did. We have to be careful what we say to children." Just because they are not living according to the way we want them to live, that don't mean anything. It's not for us to say. It's not for us to say what's in that child's mind. It's our responsibility to train up a child in the way they should go. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to train those children up. According to Deuteronomy 7, it says that when they go out and when they come in, when they lay down, when they get up, we're supposed to tell them about the Lord. That's what the book says. That's what the book said. Well, she dedicated Samuel to the Lord. Now, what I like about this, the Bible says in, 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 in verse, at verse 1, it says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. I got to stop right there. The word minister, the word minister means that this boy was busy working. He was working. I don't know if he was, what he was doing, but if I may go back in my mind's eye and look at what was happening inside the Ark of the Covenant, there was a blooded mess in that place. They would bring their oxes and their lambs and their goats and they would slaughter these animals and they would put them on a burnt offering and, and you had ashes in the bottom. Now this, 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 this altar that they burnt these animals on was huge. Now, once they burned these, these animals, the ashes had to go somewhere. Somebody had to take them on the outside of the community. Now, I might think that Samuel was one of those ones that was getting this stuff. Look, boy, picking it up, taking it on the outside. The, 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 the holy vessels, they had to be washed. I might think that Samuel was the one that was taking this stuff and he was washing it and cleaning it up for the next service. I might think that Samuel was doing the cleaning. Whatever it was that Eli needed, Samuel was doing it. Now, we can't even get our children to take the garbage out. So who fault is that? Who fault is that? It's not the child's fault. It's not the child's fault. Because the Bible says that I'm the father. If I'm dad, I'm supposed to be ruler in the house, correct? If I got a wife and I do have a wife, Amen. if the dishes are in the sink, I got a daughter. Amen. The dishes are supposed to be washed. Amen. But what we do is we let so many other things get in the way of what we have going. So if I might utilize that for a, a springboard, that means that we are making our children lazy, not to society, but lazy to the things of God. Amen. Lazy. To the things of God. Not lazy to regular work, but lazy to God's preparation. Because the book says, and the word, verse 1, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. How in the world can you say there was no open vision when they had the Torah? The first five, you, know, you do know about the Torah, right? The first five books are the books of Moses. 
So in those first five books, that's what they studied. Uh, it said that the Jewish tradition says that the, the boy at the age of 12 years old could practically quote the Shema, mm -hmm. which is the seventh chapter of Deuteronomy. He could quote it by heart, by mind. He could quote this. Mm -hmm. So that means that they had the word of God. Mm -hmm. So why was the word precious? Eli, was it was something he wasn't doing. Mm. Other than just letting this boy work, the word of God is more important than anything. You remember when Jesus, uh, in his earthly ministry, when Martha and Mary was together, and, and, and one of the sisters was laid by Jesus' feet. The other one was busy working and doing things. She was upset because her sister wasn't helping her work. But Jesus told her, you worry too much. Yeah. You need to be concerned about what's more important. Because mm. I'm here. Mm. That's what Jesus said. Mm. Well, if I might look at Eli, and I started thinking, I said, Eli, this man, how in the world can the word of God be precious in those days? Went back. In the book of the Judges, in that last verse, it said every man was doing what was right in his own eyes. Oh, and it said it about seven times in the book of Judges. Every man was doing what was right in his own eyes. Look at our society today. Mm -hmm. Everybody's doing what's right in their own eyes. Amen. We're doing what's right in our own eyes. The politicians are doing it, what's right. They're taking care of their friends. Yeah. They're doing what's right in their own eyes. I work at a school, security at the school. I'm seeing what these children need. I'm looking at the outer skirts of Memphis, Tennessee. I see how Germantown, Bartlett, and all the other schools on the outskirts are getting all the funds that they need. But the inner city school, it's not a racist man, but it's just the truth. The inner city schools where the black children are, they're not getting anything. Nothing. When I go to, as they call it, the Board of Education, I see nothing but uh, Mercedes Benz and big cars and fine trucks and everything. So somebody is getting money, but these children are not getting anything. Everybody doing their own thing, doing what's right in their own eyes. I love to utilize scripture. I love it. Listen to this. The misuse. The misuse of God's offerings. Of what God has blessed us with. Eli's two boys. His, if I may utilize his preacher songs. Now, in 1 Samuel, the second chapter, verse 12, it says, 1 Samuel, the second chapter, verse 12, it says, Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. The, the word Belial means worthless mean. No. They weren't no good. No. Worthless. They knew not the Lord. How in the world can the man of God that's, that's over the house of God, that have the Ark of the Covenant inside your very presence, in your very presence, inside the ark, you got the ten, what we call the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words. <laughs> you got them right there, but your boys don't know who God is. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, if they don't, if, if you, if they don't want to listen to you, that's a horse of another color. Come. But if they hear the word of God, how can they not know the things that God has done for Israel? Yeah. How? How can they not know that when they was in Egypt and Pharaoh was behind them and then the Red Sea was in front of them and Moses, the man of God, told the people not to worry but just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. How can you not How can you not pass it on to your children? Amen. How can you not pass it on to your children that for 40 years we walked in the desert we wandered around in the desert, but we never had to worry about the shoes that we had on our feet. We never had to worry about food in our mouths. We never had to worry about our enemies. How can the sons of Eli not know that? Mm. Now, let's bring it back to 2022. 20, 
How can our children not know what God has done for us? How? Somebody done dropped the ball somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. The ball has been dropped. Almost in every street corner in minutes, there's a church. So if there's a church everywhere, it's more than just going to the church house and preaching. It's more than just going to the church house and singing in the choir. Amen. It's more than going to the church house and dedicating your money to the church. Amen. It's more than going to the church house and seeing the pastor ride and live luxuriously. It's more than that. You got to, when you leave the house of worship, our responsibility is to train up our children in the ways of God. Amen. That's our job. That's our job. That's our job. It's when, when the ushers are standing at the doors, they are standing there for a reason. The boys and the little girls need to understand why. When, it, when they're saying, be quiet, I can remember when it started raining back in the day. My grandmother would tell, great-grandmother would tell me and my cousins, y'all be quiet in there. God is working. They understood that yeah. until I got older. So if, if, if we're not getting our children ready, how in the world can we say that? Children ain't no good. Can't say that. It's got to be coming from somewhere else, other source. And I think it's coming from our, us adults. The Bible says, verse 20, Now the sons of Eli were sons of Eliah. They knew not the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that they would that when any man offered sacrifice, that the priest's servant came while the flesh was in the sea of thing, with the flesh hook of three teeth in his hand, and he struck it into the pan or the key, kiln or the ketron or the pot, that all the flesh was brought up to the priest took it for himself, that they did not, that they, so they did in shallow unto all the Israelites that came hither. Also, before the burnt, burned the fat, the priest's servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodded flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man said unto him, Let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desires, he then would answer him, Nay. But thou shalt give it to me now, and if not, I will take it by force. That's what we got going on today. The same characteristics that these boys had is the same mess that we got going on today. You got people riding around trying to catch a loafing, and they want to take what you got. So that tells me it's not just our society. It's been going on. Amen. Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. Amen. If you don't have the spirit of God, you're no good. You're, you're no earthly good. you got to have God's spirit. Amen. Now, before Jesus came, the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit would overshadow the man of God yeah. or the woman of God. Amen. Amen. Well, when Jesus came, Jesus came. crucified, Rose went to his throne. Now he embodies us. So as we study scripture, as we read scripture, as we preach scripture, as we sing praises to God, what happens is is God can interact in us. So it's no, you don't have to worry about me abusing my wife. You don't have to worry about me stealing from you. You don't have to worry about me harming a little child because God is in me. But these individuals did not have God. But what I like about Samuel, verse 18 says, but Samuel ministered before the Lord. See, when you minister to God, now this is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about giving. That has its place. When you're getting on your knees and you're praying to the Lord, mm -hmm. I might stop there. There's another thing, a different type of ministry, too. I said that earlier. A wife has a ministry to her husband. 
a husband has a ministry to his wife and to his children and to his fellow co-workers and to his people of the uh, believers in the church of God. But what's going on is we think ministry is behind the poor. Mm. That's what we think. Come on. Mm. Come on. Ministry is more. This is preaching. Ministry is dealing with each other yes. in a believer's way. Yes. Bringing God's That's kingdom it. On earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Right. That's it. Jesus said. That's it. Come on, Amen. You remember prayer teach. when they said, Lord, teach us how to pray? He yes. said, When you pray, yes. our Father who art in heaven, yes. hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come on earth as it is yes. in heaven. How is it going to happen on earth? Through us. Yes, Lord. That's the only way. That's it. There's no other way. That's right. It's got to yes. come through us. Man, come on, teach. The word of God has to be taught. Yes. Now, it says that Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child girded with a linen empire. Now that means that his mom knew that her boy, the only child that she had at the time, needed clothing. So what she would do every year, she would take him clothes because she knew he was wrong. And I'm, I'm quite sure she talked to him and told him about, son, just make sure you remain respectful. Make sure you do everything that the man of God is telling you to do. Make sure you do your, two, your duties like you should. Now, God is watching me. Mm. The Bible says in Romans 8, it says, He that searches the heart know the mind of the spirit and make intercession for it. Because we don't know what we should pray for. Yeah. Samuel didn't understand a lot of the things. I'm quite sure he didn't. A lot of the things that his mom was telling him. He didn't understand a lot of this stuff. But the same thing is going on with us men today. I got to, I, we, we, us men, we got to get out of neutral zone. You know what neutral oh, zone is, right? Yeah. Somebody, y'all know what neutral zone is, right? Yeah. Neutral zone. You put your car in neutral. Uh -huh. Put your feet on the gas. It's it's make a lot of noise. Yeah, neutral zone. It's all it's gonna do, make a lot of noise. Amen. Come on. Ain't gonna do nothing. <laughs> moreover, verse 19 says, Moreover, the mother made him a little coat, brought it to him from year to year. When she came up with her husband to offer a yearly sacrifice. So not only is she worried about the sacrifices to God, but she's also dealing with her son because she knows that she has lent or, or her son is working for the Lord through Eli. She understands this. And Eli blessed El Elkanah. And his wife, and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for a loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went unto their own home, and the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Now, Eli was very old. 1 Samuel 2 22. Now, Eli was very old. And heard, listen to this, he heard all that his sons did unto all Israel, and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Y'all understand, y'all know this stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Right today. Right today. We got pastors that sleeping with the women in the church. Mm -hmm. We got this going on. We got this going on right today. Churches are huge. You got you got women everywhere. You got men everywhere. They got money coming from far to going north. We got money. They got it all going on, but they doing it today. Mm -hmm. Solomon said, "There's nothing new under the sun." These men was doing this way back then, just over two thousand years ago, almost twenty seven hundred years ago. They was doing this way back then. They still doing it now. So where is it coming from? We know where it's coming from. The Bible says that he came in the garden and he started sneaking and creeping. The snake. Mm. That was his character. Mm. That's what he do. Mm. He sneak up, get in your ear, get you to doing something that you shouldn't do. That's what was going on. Well, nah. Eli knew his boys was doing this. And so I started thinking about this. I said, well, now, Lord, you, you, he, he chastised his boys because the book says, and now they lay with the women that are similar at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? 
for I hear of your evil dealings by this people. Nay, my sons, for it is not good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sins against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. Now, let's stop right there. We see a lot of our, our, our young boys and girls nowadays dying like roaches with rain. They dying randomly. Is it possible? Is it possible that because the men are not in the house, or if they're in the house, they're neutral? Is it possible that it's a curse going on here? Man, that's it. Because if you don't teach your children, mm. that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna be wild. Wow. I hear them all the time saying, "Oh God, oh God!" And I ask them, "What God are you talking about?" Yeah. What God are you talking about? Because I see the little girl, they come, they come to school and they practice the neck. And they got policies that say you got to dress a certain way. Something ain't going on. Somebody not standing up like they should. Somebody not standing in the gap. Something's not, something's not happening right here. So, Verse 27, it says, And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Now, a man of God coming to a man that's over the house of God that's watching and making sure the lamp burns right before the ark of the covenant. So God sends a man. The Bible don't say who this guy was. It don't say nothing about it. It's, and there came a man of God unto Eli. I like that. The reason why I like that is because I'm nobody important. But when I am, it's going to preach God's word. And what he's saying is, God is watching what you're doing. Amen. He knows that you have not removed your son from the position that they are in. We got a lot of people in position that they don't need to be in. Mm -hmm. Many. Mm -hmm. I'm almost willing to bet you if some of you could testify, you Go to work and you got people that supervise that shouldn't be supervisors mm. because they got there because they know somebody. Right. That ain't how God works. This is the world we're living in. Mm. That's not how God's house is supposed to be. Right. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, uh oh, did I not plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt, in Pharaoh's house? Let me stop right there. Y'all remember Aaron? You remember when Moses went up into the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights? Aaron listened to the people, built the ark. The people started dancing and having orgies and everything else down there. Well, he had some boys that did the exact same thing. The same thing that Eli saw. And this is his line. Eli is out of his line. Out of the lineage of Aaron. So it's something with this genetic thing is, maybe, maybe, maybe. Did I not choose him out of the tribe of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I not give unto the house of thy fathers all the offerings made by fire to the children of Israel? Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honor thy sons above me to make yourselves fat with the cheapest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Same thing going on today. Ain't nothing changing. The people are taking God's sources and using it for something wrong. So what, 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 what needs to happen here? What needs to happen? Look at what God said. Verse 30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I have indeed that my house and the house of thy fathers should, should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, it be far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. What he's saying is, I don't care nothing about them no more. I'm going to let them be what they want to be. 
mm. New Testament cards, they're going to turn out and they're going to be uh, no good for me. Mm. They're no good for me. Mm. Well, the same thing is going on in our society. I said that. In the book of Revelation, it says this right here. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repent they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So God, in the book of Revelation, what he had did was, what's going to happen, what's going to, I think what's happening now, is people going to be taken out by plagues. Mm. Yeah, and, and I don't know if it's going to come through the hand of man, because they try to say that uh, this coronavirus is man-made. I don't know. Uh, do I do know that in the word of God it said that if you would not honor me, he said I'm going to bring some diseases that's not written in this book. <laughs> AIDS not written in the book. Mm. So they're trying to come up with stuff now that they can take AIDS. Because I look at Magic Johnson, he don't look like he got no AIDS in me. Mm. He big and I ain't. Mm. <laughs> so God is doing something. Mm. Something is taking place. Praise God. But 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7, he gives 18 characteristics on the, 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 the characteristics of man. And when, one thing I like or dislike, at the end of it, on those 18 characteristics, he said they'd be perilous times. He said, but they would sneak in the houses and leave gullible women, silly women, laden with sins, ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's what the, the book said. So that we got this going on, because I know it's going on because children are still being born. They're still being born. The men are still doing what they've been doing all the time, but we cannot, we cannot hold up on what God has for us. Well, in the book of Samuel, it, it tells us how God came and spoke to Samuel. He called Samuel late at night, early in the morning, probably right before daylight, because the, the lamp was getting ready to go out. Because you do know that it, they would light it up in the evening time. It would burn all the way until right early in the morning. And so God started walking. And ain't that something? We don't know when Jesus got up out the grave. They say he got up early, early in the morning, Sunday morning. That's what the book said. So we don't know how God works. But I'm going to tell you people here this, today, you believers here today, when you can't sleep at night, it's time to pray. Amen. Something Amen. going on. Get your body. Amen. Get your Bible. Amen. Open it up. Go and see what God is trying to tell you. Amen. He might speak to you. Because the Bible says he just is, he's the same like as he was yesterday and today and forevermore. So God will speak to you. It's just you got to be willing to listen. Amen. You got to know the difference between his voice and the voice of Lucifer, a.k.a. the devil. Or the voice of the cell phone. Sometimes we need to put that thing away. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Revelation 20, 10 through 15. And I'll be through. It tells us. It don't matter if you die. Death is not going to stop you from coming into the, the presence of God. And giving an account for what you do. That's not going to stop. As a matter of fact. Turn over there. Revelation 20, 10 through 15. And we're going to close this thing out. If you got to say amen. Revelation 20, 10 through 15. Amen. Got it? Amen. amen. Good. Now listen to this. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. 
and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great. Listen to this. He said the dead, small and great. Small and great. Stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So, when we die, that's not the end. Death and hell is not the end. It's something worse Amen. than that. If there's a word, worse and worse. And worse. It's something better than that. It's something worse than that. I don't need that part in my life. Amen. I don't want that part in my life. Amen. If you don't remember nothing else, Late in the night, early in the morning, God will speak. Amen. The sons of Elijah misusing God's people. It's not a good place to be in. God will answer prayers when you pray. Hannah was barren, and the Lord blessed her with a son named Samuel. She dedicated that boy to the Lord. Then the Lord turns around and blesses her with Three boys and two girls. God answered prayers. Amen. He answered them. Amen. That's all I have. Now thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.